Hello, today I'm going to talk about how geologists can use spectral data to map rocks and for exploration for iron ore in band and iron formation. In this talk, I'll first uh, describe how um, some general principles about spectral data, and then I'll illustrate this by uh, its application in the World Range District of Western Australia and how we use it for exploration. So, by introduction, generally we understand ore deposits as being the products of hot fluids moving through rocks, carrying metals and depositing metals in a location that we can later um, extract. So these mineralizing systems, which are sourced from hot fluids, they leave a hydrothermal footprint behind. And this footprint is generally several times larger than the actual ore shoots that we're interested in mining. So geologists use this concept to explore for these narrow, high-value ore shoots by mapping the hydrothermal alteration halos. And in the last 10 years, we use spectrometers as part of our standard set of tools for mineral mapping. And we can use this at different scales from deposit scales to district scales. And if you scan through the literature, you can see its use for porphyry copper gold deposits, porphyry scarn, lead zinc, gold deposits, manganese, iron ore, and VMS occurrences. There are several different types of spectrometers that we can use. Handheld devices such as the PIMA or the ASD. Uh, in the laboratory, we use the Hylogger, which is a, a larger uh, set of equipment for scanning drill core. And then we can use it in a remote sense. It can be on board a satellite or a, uh, an aeroplane fly, um, flying and navigating over the Earth's surface and collecting data. And these days, major companies generally have access to handheld devices, uh, either through owning them or uh, using a laboratory that have this equipment. And one important development is that ACID data is freely available from several web, uh, from the CSIRO website, and it covers all of Western Australia at the moment. So I think this is something that we should all be aware of because it's more than likely that uh, most of us will get a, a chance to use it uh, in the field. So here are some basic principles about spectral studies. Basically, the, we have electromagnetic radiation, which is being sourced from the, the sun. It's going to shine down, hit a surface, which is the, uh, can be rocks, can be anything, can be a car, a building, doesn't matter. And this radiation is reflected from that surface and is detected. And our detector, in this case, in this diagram, is a, a satellite. So um, electromagnetic radiation is traveling down, hitting the Earth's surface, and then bouncing back and being detected by the, the satellite. And so when the radiation hits the, the Earth, it's reflected and it forms this characteristic um, uh, wave, wavelengths shown here. And the aster can pick up 14 bands and they span the visible near-infrared radiation band, the short wave infrared radiation, and thermal infrared radiation. And so what we get from this is a, a certain mineral might have a, a characteristic um, a peak or trough. And so within this, this window of, of observation, we look for a characteristic features that will be definitive of these, these minerals. So we can therefore find out the mineral occurrence and also mineral chemistry. This is what it look, some of these devices look like in the lab. 
and this is a setup uh, that CSIRO in Perth has, uh, and that is that there is a, a detector which looks like a, a torch. It's shining light down onto a, a sample, and, and it's being reflected back and detected. There's equipment that processes the um, the information, and then it's shown and recorded in the on the computer. This is a, an example on the right here of some iron ore from my, my project area and what I did was I recorded some of this data and here is some of the information from a, a mafic rock where we have the, the spectrum of iron rich chlorite and then there is the recorded spectrum from the the mineral and so you can see that there is some correlation in peaks and troughs and that's how we tell that's what uh, what mineral it is. Laboratory based devices include the, the Highlogger and I've just got some photos captured from CSIRO's website and you can see it in action uh, within the laboratory out in the field um, what it does, it provides a, a continuous scan of, of drill core and provides high resolution images of the core and the, the spectra. It collects these regions of the, the spectrum. Um, standard costs are shown here and the data that we collect can be processed with the CSIRO's spectral the spectral geologist software and you get something like this where there's a high resolution image of the core and there's several columns with minerals detected and so if we plot this from downhole from say near surface at zero meters down to 300 meters we have a legend down here where color equals different mineral type and you can get its its occurrence down the hole, so you can see that the uh, the middle of this hole is is enriched in whatever this this yellow mineral is. So it's quite handy to to look at mineral distribution within a intersection of rock, and then we can plot these for different drill holes in three dimensions, and you can then view your alteration mineralogy in a, a program like LeapFrog. So that was a laboratory based equipment. This here is the, an example of a remote spectral device. Um, I'm showing Aster in this situation. So Aster can be downloaded from Japan uh, website in 60 by 60 kilometer scenes and that's the, uh, the, the current cost. So you have a range of scenes for any given location and for obvious reasons, we don't want to have a, a scene with a lot of cloud cover. Uh, the Aster is going to gather information in, in 14 bands. And there's a series of band ranges like this, which we talked about just before. The important thing here is the resolution of each band. We have 15 meters, 30 meters, 90 meters. So can be as good as 15 each pixel representing an area of 15 square, 15 square meters, or it can be as worse as uh, 90 square meters. And then with this data, we process it with a, uh, the TSG software, and we can get an idea about mineral abundance or mineral composition groups. And there's a series of geoscience products that we can uh, look at. And I've got a couple of examples here. On the left, we have the, the false color image where red areas are areas of a lot of vegetation, and then the other areas just show the amount of reflectance. So dark areas are areas that absorb light, whereas white areas have high reflectivity. And then on the right-hand side, I've shown you an example of the Aster process data where we can look at mineral abundances. So the previous slide was Aster 
and that is considered to, to be representative of uh, multispectral data, whereas now we're talking about the, the high map, which is collecting hyperspectral data. So uh, unlike ASTA, the high map records data from uh, low amplitude airborne surveys, uh, which fly over the, the area that you want to be mapped. It's more costly and time consuming to organize these surveys, but pixel resolution is pretty good. It's about uh, four and a half meters compared with 15 meters of the ASTA. And we can pick up the, um, the three bands uh, of ASTA, uh, including the thermal infrared. Um, we process the data in a similar way to the ASTA, and we get uh, a product like this below where the the, um, the spectral data is draped over a digital elevation model and in this case here um, it's showing alteration related to high sulfidation uh, deposits in Spain. Okay so um, to conclude I'll talk about how I applied this to my study in at World Range. I've previously talked about this in, in other presentations or movies, so I'll just skip through the the uh, geological setting. Um, this is a solid geology map of the World Range area. It's located here's here's Perth in Western Australia. World Range is located about seven hundred kilometers to the northeast. In the solid geology map, I just want to point out the in green, mafic units, uh, basalts, dolerite gabbro, and in the, the, the blue, I'm showing the, the biff, and it's surrounded by um, granitic rock. In outcrop, you can see on the left hand side here the, the ridge, which is defined by biff. In this case, here it's about 30 meters wide but continues for about 70 kilometers. You can see it occurring into the distance. And in the lower photograph, you can see a nice rounded outcrop of, of dolerite or, or gabbro. And I've talked about this in other presentations, but we're chasing two main ore types, uh, one defined by magnetite, the other one by gerfite and hematite. And this might be a little bit small to get the details out of, but I'll just point to the main things. On the left is the, the solar geology map that you've seen just before. In the middle is the outcrop map, and I'm showing outcrop in colour. So basalt in green, banded iron formation in blue, carrying along in, as ridges, and in pink, scattered outcrop of, of granite. Everything in grey is sufficient sediment, you know, transported material in, in rivers and drainage areas. Down below is a false colour image, and in the, uh, the bottom uh, centre and right are two Aster products. In this middle one, it's picking up MgOH minerals, so for example, amphiboles and, and chlorite. And you can see in this centre area here, this anomalous colour, it corresponds to up here nice outcrop of basalt. So it's really picking up the, the mafic units quite nicely, this product. And on the right hand side, this is the opaques to silica index. So importantly, it's picking up opaque minerals. These are things like iron oxides, pyrite, and organic carbon. And here, these anomalous areas are forming bands. So these correspond to the, the ridges that we see in defined by the the diff. So those two products are very good at identifying rock type. Now how do we find iron ore? On the left hand side is showing uh, iron grades for the Beban deposit. Here's a scale here, one kilometer, and I've just circled around the, my, the main high grade ore body. On the right hand side is the, is the opa opaque the silica index. And what this is doing, it's uh, showing areas that are rich in opaque minerals. And in this case, it's mostly the, the iron oxides at, at surface. Remember, 
all these features are sur surface features. It's not seen beneath uh, the, 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 the few millimeters of, of the outcrop. But what we can see here is outcrop of high grade iron ore corresponding to the, the geochemistry, geochemical data. And we can also see its transport, um, you know, which in this case is, is being transported off the ridge down the slope. And here uh, I'm showing hypergene hydrothermal alteration in country rocks. The country rocks are mafic igneous rocks like basalt, gabbros. And on the left hand side, we're seeing iron rich MGH minerals, so iron rich amphiboles or iron rich chlorite. Our metamorphic chlorite is not iron rich. However, chlorite which precipitates from the hydrothermal ore fluids approximal to the BIF is rich in iron. So that's why we see these anomalous zones in the proximal country rock to the PIFOSID iron ore bodies. And then in the, the other example is these iron rich chlorites also highlighted. They're essentially glowing in the ASTA data. So the advantages of ASTA is uh, it's, it's another tool that we have to look for anomalies. So we can have an integrated comparison of these different surveys. They're independent, so it adds strength to our, uh, our interpretation. So it's remote, so it's easy to gather, and you can be followed up by ground testing. It's cost effective, and you can quickly look through different targets within the district without uh, having any environmental or cultural issues. Uh, so you can quickly get a, a sense of what's, what you're dealing with within your exploration area. And the great thing about it is that it's free to download from the CSRO website. So for more information, please have a look at uh, a paper of, of mine, which has um, been recently published in Economic Geology. And in this paper, I, I go through the application of ASTA for exploration in the World Range area. Or else, you know, uh, send me an email or have a look at what we've got on our, our website.